Oh, we want to take you now live to the Israeli Knesset, the parliament, where the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is speaking. Let's listen in. The conditions for our success is unity. We should remain united. We should remain united at the level of the national unity government and the people as well. And I would like to extend all thanks to the members of the opposition who continue to make maximum efforts at the time of war. I thank all the families and all volunteers. I would like also to thank each and every single citizen. And I thank all the people of Israel for coming together around one goal, demonstrating bravery, resolve, and fortitude. We are all in this battle, one united Israel. My fellow members of the Knesset, we have many questions that, was, that were raised 10 days ago. We started to implement some of the decisions handed down. Now we are focused on one goal, to unite our ranks and march forward. That's why we require resolve and fortitude, simply for the reason that this triumph needs time. We must win. We must prevail. We must triumph against the forces of darkness. What they win, what, what they wish to see is to annihilate the state of Israel. They wish to bring the Middle East to the dark ages, to the age of barbarity, bar the day of backwardness and barbarianism. However, as I said, we should remain united around this goal to maintain the state of Israel. We have witnessed many atrocities within the towns and villages in the Gaza envelope. We also witnessed the young men and women who were slaughtered while celebrating the whole world must realize that Hamas is a terrorist organization, just like ISIS. And as we united together against ISIS, we must come together to crush Hamas. It is our war, and if we are not united on the front, this danger will reach to you. I have also a message to Iran and Hezbollah. Do not test our will. Do not make the same mistake, simply for the reason that the price you will pay this time will be much more higher. The U.S. president said it to you in English. Don't do it. And I am telling you in Hebrew, beware of the state of Israel. The state of Israel extends all thanks and appreciation to the United States, President Biden, the United Kingdom, France, and other world states who rose to our support. Members of Knesset, we are carrying out all the preparations for the war in the south and across the country. We also will allow the delivery aid to reach Gaza. We must act. We are united behind our soldiers security personnel, rescue crews. I met with them in person. They are brave heroes. 
epitomizing the spirit of bravery and fortitude. Our soldiers are ready and they will continue to be so until we crush our enemies totally and completely. Yesterday, I met with the relatives of the kidnapped Israelis. We sat for hours and I listened to them, to all their stories. I also listened to the audio re recording, more than one. Uh, daughter was telling her mother to save her life. We are committed before all those families to bring home our brothers and sisters, the children who are kidnapped by Hamas. You cannot imagine these feelings are indescribable. I visited one of the towns to the south of our country. There, I visited one of the premises. One of the homes had an exit. The militants climbed through and killed those who were hiding. I can imagine the feelings of horror these children have experienced. Our hearts go out to the families of the soldiers, the families of the missing, and the families of the injured. How painful it is. The pain is profound, and in contrast, our bravery and courage is more robust. Since the establishment of our state, many attempts were made to wipe it out. We have paid a price not paid by any people in the world. In addition, many calls were cried out for our annihilation. Yet the difference today is that we have a very robust state, mighty army, and united people with fortitude. And this is what we are going to achieve. We entered this war and we will triumph. We cannot stop until we achieve emphatic triumph. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressing the winter session of the Israeli Knesset, the parliament which has just started. Uh, Netanyahu speaking there after the Israeli President Isaac Herzog. He said the conditions for Israel's success is unity. He was talking about, of course, what he says is Israel's success in its war in Gaza. He said we should remain united in the national go unity government, but also we should remain united uh, uh, um, across uh, all of Israel with the people of Israel. He also had a message to Iran saying, do not test our will, the price you will pay this time will be higher. And uh, that um, the Israeli plans for Gaza will continue. Tamer Karmud from the Doha Institute of Graduate Studies is here with us on Al Jazeera to discuss this and all the other developments today in this Gaza war that Israel started some 10 days ago. What did you make of what we heard from Netanyahu? He insisted a lot on the word unity because this, has something, this is something that's been lacking in Israel in the last few months, but they've seemed to have come together after these recent events, the attacks, on, um, the attacks by Hamas on Israel. Question though is how long will, will this unity within Israel last? That's a very good question, Foley. I think it, it all depends on the... <clears throat> on what's coming in for Gaza, on the, on the future and the conduct of the military operation in the Gaza Strip. This is, a, this is a prime minister who tries to project leadership in a time of crisis, stresses on unity, but of course he inherited a very problematic 
political legacy, a very defranchised society in Israel, polarized society. And of course, that's the only message now he can deliver as a prime minister to his uh, parliament, to the Knesset. But also it's an indication, I think, that Blinken's visit might not have achieved any concrete results on bringing ceasefire. Mm. The fact How that he's... So? Yes, he's yeah. firm and he's threatening left and right again right. and he's saying we have the US support, we have France's support, the UK support and he's, he's still threatening. So this is a very defined prime minister and, and the tone is, is a war tone. He's, he's, uh, he wants war. So he's, he's not, I, I, I don't see any shift or change in his discourse or even any softening of, of, of the war language and the war tone. And that's, that's worrying. Yeah, but me. how, I mean, I, I, and I see what, what you're saying and I hear what you're saying, but it's also difficult to see how he can back away from all that vociferous language he had a week ago when the Hamas, Hamas attack happened. He has to deliver something to the Israeli people in, in his view, I imagine. Unfortunately, I think, yes. Is, I mean, military-wise, Israel... I mean, has all the intentions to go inside the Gaza Strip. Mm. Now, you'll have different scenarios. Uh, I, I, it all depends on the scale, the scale of this operation. Uh, if they go one kilo or five kilos or ten kilos or reoccupy re re the entire Strip, mm -hmm. I, I, I really I don't know what's the scale of the operation. Yeah, we... But but he is he always always a master tactic. Uh, he's, a, he's, he's a master politician. He can always play with the language. Now he promised there will be a land incursion, a land invasion to the Gaza Strip. Yes, they might go inside, but not achieve any of the big goals. But he can. But what are the play. goals? We don't even know what the goals are. They've talked about <coughs> eliminating Hamas completely, mm. which a lot of people have said is not achievable. What are the goals in Israeli Israeli eyes, Israel's government eyes? What would constitute, and I hate to use this term, what would mm. constitute a mission accomplished for Israel? Uh, okay, let's imagine this scenario. Mm. It, and that's, for me, a worst-case scenario. Uh, Israel invades the entire Gaza Strip, destroys, demolishes everything, and then the moment it withdraws, a Hamas fighter comes from one of the tunnels on the ground carrying a Palestinian flag with a clashing cough. Would this be a victory to Israel? Mm. So, I don't know, that's one scenario. If they insist on achieving the declared goals they have so far insisted on, for me, that means one scenario. It's the Israeli army reoccupying the entire Strip and staying there for some long time. And this is, it's, it's something I don't want to think even about its consequences. It's going to be uh, a nightmare for Indeed. Palestinians. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tamar. For the moment, Tamar Kamut from the Doha Institute of Graduate Studies.